Today, I'm going to share three more of my LSAT and law school admissions predictions. Hey, what's up, everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to share three more of my LSAT and law school admissions predictions. Before I get into it, a little bit about LSAT Unplugged. We offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. So I recently made a video titled Law School Admissions Predictions that got a lot of attention. Folks loved it. And so I figured, why not make another video with three more LSAT and Law School Admissions Predictions? First, I'll recap the three from the previous video for those who haven't seen it. Then I'll share my next three. So here are the first three predictions I made in my previous video. First, I predicted that ChatGPT and other AI chatbots like it are going to make application essays less relevant because, of course, admission officers will not be able to easily determine if you wrote your own essay or not. They won't be able to evaluate the quality of your writing and, of course, the ideas contained within your essays. Secondly, I predicted that LSAC will remove the current logic game section in July of 2024. And third, I predicted that the ABA will not remove the LSAT requirement anytime in the near future, and even if they did, law schools will still require it because they find it useful. So go to the previous video for more on that. Now I'll get into my next three predictions. First, I predict that it will become increasingly difficult to get merit aid from law schools because they're going to devote more of their budgets to employment outcomes and bar passage rates in accordance with how U.S. News has shifted its criteria in determining where law schools are ranked. So in short, law schools currently throw lots of scholarship money at applicants with LSATs and GPAs above the medians in order to raise their status in the rankings. Law schools will still continue to have incentive to do that, but they also have a limited pool of money they're pulling from, which means they'll have less to devote to merit aid for applicants because they'll need some of that money for focusing on improving bar passage rates and employment outcomes for students on the other end post-graduation or near the, near graduation. There will still be significant scholarship money available to matriculating students, but you're going to need even higher LSAT scores and even higher GPAs in order to get the same merit aid you would have gotten a couple of years back. My second prediction is that it will become increasingly easy to get into law school as we approach the year 2030 due to a coming demographic cliff. For those who are not familiar with this concept, allow me to recap. Basically, there was a significant decline in the U.S. birth rate ever since the Great Recession of 2008. The U.S. birth rate dropped 20%, which means that it's going to be easier and easier to get into law school as we approach the year 2030 because there will be fewer folks applying. Law schools are acutely aware of this. It's an existential threat to those that rely on tuition dollars. And so they're going to start accepting more students as we approach that cliff in 2030 for law school admissions because they need to increase the amount of tuition dollars in their bank accounts to weather the coming storm with the coming decline of applicants. And so as we get near 2030, it's going to be easier to get in with lower numbers, of course, only up to a certain point because they want to protect their medians. So there's a trade-off there between keeping medians up and keeping the tuition dollars coming in. But regardless, it's bad news for law schools and good news for you as the applicant. My third prediction here is that Prometric will continue to have tech and proctoring issues. And as a result, more and more applicants will be seeking accommodations to take the LSAT on paper in person. And I do recommend this actually because when you take the LSAT on paper, you remove all the potential tech issues you could experience, and you're also taking it in person, which means that you're minimizing the likelihood of experiencing issues with your proctors. In fact, if you're taking the LSAT on paper in North America, you have to take it in person at a Prometric testing center, which I actually don't think is a bad thing because then you minimize the likelihood of both the tech issues and the proctoring issues. It's a great situation to be in, and it's actually not that difficult to get accommodations for the paper LSAT. You simply need a note from a qualified professional like a doctor or a psychiatrist to issues with eye strain, looking at the screen for a long time, difficulty focusing when looking at the screen for a long time, and so on. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. Maybe you know someone who's concerned about the proctoring issues with Prometric. Maybe you know someone concerned about getting scholarship money. This video could make the difference for them. 
In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.